we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about fucking Brad Parscale now, getting absolutely cumstered and dumpstered by cops. Apparently, police Isn't brutality. Just darling. Apparently, police brutality impacts uh, uh, MAGA influencers as well, or uh, you know, people His who are in Hassan. who are a part of. Anyway, whatever. Let's just watch it. Here, this is pretty funny. And we'll get to the details in a second. So Brad Parscale is, of course, Donald Trump's, um, was Donald Trump's campaign manager. Spent millions of fucking dollars on, like, dumb shit. Everyone always made fun of him for, ass P -word. like, uh, Make that pull out game week. spending all of his money on, like, oh, stupid shit uh, that, that uh, had to soothe uh, Trump's insecurities. Here he is looking fucking kind of nice with it, actually. Florida man. Don't do this. I'm not doing anything. Relax. What happened? So, she started saying all this shit. Hey, get on the ground, man. Get on the ground. Get on the ground, man. Get on the ground, man. Oh, Jesus. Get on the ground. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Hey, Wolf, figure it all out, all right? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I didn't do anything. Wait, but they're not choking him. That's weird. Why didn't they put the spit guard on him? Why didn't they choke him? Why didn't they put their fucking knee on his head? I've seen so many cops arrest 14-year-old black kids in Florida in an infinitely more in an infinitely more aggressive capacity. Kind of weird. Now, okay. Having said that, this is a problem, okay? You can't do this. You can't fucking do this. I don't give a shit that it's Brad Parscale who is a dog shit person and sucks ass. And uh, it, that still doesn't change my opinion on police brutality. You can't fucking do that. You can't do that. You shouldn't do that even if he was actually doing something. Okay? But don't say this is fucking cool just because it's Brad Parscale getting tackled. I didn't do second, anything. Okay? Maybe this will get Republicans to be fucking anti-police. I would be surprised. Yeah, you're right. Relax. Okay. Yeah. 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 One is your leg. Okay, get up. Okay, good. I didn't do anything. Anyway, so this happened when uh, Brad was apparently called, or cops were apparently called on the Brad Parscale's property uh, because of uh, an assault potentially happening, a domestic dispute happening. Uh, we'll give you further details right now um, on the issue. So this is the... Um, Ex-Trump campaign manager Brad Parscale knocked to the ground uh, and to end standoff body camera footage shows. Now, Fort Lauderdale is where this occurred. Brad Parscale is the former is campaign Hassan. manager of President Donald Trump. He was in the middle of a standoff with the police at his Fort Lauderdale home when unexpected help arrived. Officer Christopher Wilson, a personal friend. The officer persuaded Parscale to step outside of his home, allowing officers to knock him to the ground and detain him so he could be sent for a mental evaluation. Fort Lauderdale police on Monday released the body camera footage of 911 call and records detailing how Sunday's emergency unfolded. Uh, it started with his wife's call for help and police saw cuts and bruises on his wife that said were caused by Parscale. Police body camera footage showed how officers knocked the shirtless Parscale to the ground outside of his home and detained him. Officers recovered 10 firearms from his home, including several pistols, a shotgun, and a rifle. So they were called on for, like I said, a domestic dispute. The encounter with police deranged. started Sunday afternoon on DeSoto Drive, where Parscale 44 lives with his wife, Candace Parscale. Doxed. The couple had argued, and Candace Parscale said her husband chambered a round into a pistol during a heated exchange between the two. It is unclear what they were arguing about, but she said she fled to the house in fear and asked the realtor who was about to show a nearby house for help. The realtor, the realtor called the cops. On the phone, Candace Parscale told the 911 dispatcher that she heard a gunshot shortly after exiting her home and was afraid her husband was going to kill himself. Later, she told an officer she couldn't be sure if it had been a gunshot or a car backfiring. 
Oh no, did he do that? Oh gosh, your arms, both of your arms. Has he been hurting you? The realtor can be heard asking Candace Parscale as they wait for the police. She also told officers that Brad Parscale had been stressed out over the past two weeks and had made comments about shooting himself. So, uh, he was a threat to others as a consequence of the domestic dispute call that the cops were coming in for, and also a threat to himself. He was also known to have weapons, and a, a gunfire or a gunshot had been reported in the eyes of the police, right? So they're coming into a domestic dispute, something that they engage in on a daily basis. Shots have already been fired in their minds, okay? According to, um, if he's suicidal, cops being aggro is the worst fucking idea. I know. I know. That's what happens when you fucking bring cops to a domestic dispute. Luckily, this was dealt with with minimum police brutality. This is literally, it, from American standards, this is literally a good police altercation. For all of the Europeans who are in my chat right now, I need you to imagine that what you just watched was actually a good police uh, scenario where no one died. Okay? It's fucking insane to comprehend when you look at it from anywhere else on the planet, but this is literally a good police scenario for Americans. It's not, it's not a good police scenario. And this, he shouldn't have been fucking slammed to the pavement at all. But when you have shots fired, Someone who is suicidal and domestic abuse, and the guy's uh, known to have guns. That is considered a good police altercation where the person didn't die by suicide by cop. Just remember that. It's not. It's not from the rest of the world, uh, from the point of view of the rest Wars of the world, or if you're like a normal human being, you're like, what the fuck? He wasn't even like resisting I arrest or anything, and they slammed him in the pavement. I was a this is bullshit. Really opening me up to a different school of thought. Much love from Idaho. But um, but this is technically a good police interaction. Officer Timothy Skaggs was the first to arrive at the neighbor's house. Records show he said he uh, witnessed bruising on Candace Parscale's arm and face. Told him that the injuries had come from Brad, though she said she'd gotten them earlier that week. Skaggs called Brad over a telephone and found Bradley's speech was slurred as though he was under the influence of an alcoholic beverage and he seemed to be crying. As Skaggs made contact, body camera footage shows Candace Parscale visibly relieved that Brad hadn't harmed himself. Skaggs then tries to get Brad to exit the house. Can you come outside with no weapons, please? Instead, the six foot eight inch tall man who once operated the digital political campaign reputed this to have put President Trump in the White Robert. House in 2016 paced and raved according to the police report. Yeah, Brad is fucking a giant too, by the way, as you can see in this uh, footage. So this is the dude who said, August Takala, he's a reporter editor for Media. He says, Parscale, who's having a calm conversation with a police officer, is assaulted by five other police officers armed with automatic weapons. Is that new treatment for people with mental health issues, or is it just for Trump supporters? And of course, this is his pinned tweet. Watch, New York police boss Mike O'Mara went off on the media today. Stop treating us like animals and thugs and start treating us with some respect. Our legislators abandoned us. The press is vilifying us. It's disgusting. It's only new for you if you spend uh, uh, an inordinate amount of time running coverage for the cops when they do this exact same thing and much worse things to black people because you operate. What did I tell you before? Racism is like a puzzle piece in the back of your head that you slam onto every single instance where there is like any sort of uncertainty. You, you fucking fill in that slot with the puzzle piece of racism. You go... It must be because the black guy deserved it. He must have been a criminal. He must have deserved it. If you, if you don't apply that same standard to someone like Brad Parscale, that means you're doing it exclusively because you think the black dudes almost all the time fucking deserve it. This treatment is not supposed to happen to exactly law-abiding citizens, good folk, 
you know, white people. All right? That's what it is. I've covered this numerous times. I've talked about uh, the white uh, inaction or wealthy people never really, uh, wealthy people never really fucking uh, looking at police brutality in an honest capacity because they live with the underlying assumption, whether they admit it to themselves or not, rich white people live with the underlying assumption that cops are supposed to be the line of defense against the peasants, the poors, uh, if they were to ever rise up and do something uh, against them. That's why their brutality against even white people from time to time is relatively acceptable because, hey, they must have deserved it and ultimately they serve a really important purpose which is to protect and serve me and my interests. So when an instance like this occurs, where you have a relatively wealthy, relatively well-off white guy who is a conservative get fucking slammed to the pavement when he's clearly not doing anything wrong, right? Aside from, you know, a domestic dispute, suicidal ideations, suicidal tendencies, and also having guns in his home, um, but uh, still getting slammed to the fucking pavement when he's trying to have a conversation, you understand it might even be a, a an eye-opening moment for you suicidal tendencies okay god damn it i i, I have literal chill like i love being able to to uh, speak to a younger audience about important issues but in moments like this where i misspeak your focus on like that small fucking instance where i just misspoke leads me to believe that like i'm not making any progress here at all and i'm just kind of yelling into a fucking uh empty room full of people who are just like excited to to like catch me slipping i guess anyway All right, why the, f why the fuck do cops have to deal with this? This shouldn't be their job, suicidal. He doesn't need cops. Yeah. Anyway, the point is, notice how the cop personally treated Brad Parscale like a human being, so he drew him out um, without weapons. And then notice the treatment that he got after, where he was not treated like a system. human being because he was treated as a perp. When you're a perp, you're, taking yourself too you're treated if like... You can't take a second and giggle when you say Tendi's on accident, your wound a little too tight, my dude. Having a gun might be an automatic cop call. Just found you a week ago. I love hearing takes about to the work, man. Thank you. They could have easily apprehended him quietly, silently, as a human being, and treated him like a human being, continued to treat him like a human being, but instead they treated him like a fucking animal. Because that's the way cops see every perp. They are enemy combatants. And so the heart of the, the problems that, uh, that uh, Black Lives Matter protesters oh, speak out pain. against all pain, the time. Sean. I lost my best friend this month due to cancer. Feels bad, man. Anyway, can you please deal with all the people asking for a diaper change? No. <sighs> Shit, I'm sorry to hear that Celtic Von Steron. Wet ass P word. Make that pullout game weak. Do you think this will have a similar effect when the 75 year old white strike. grandpa got a skull crack? No, it won't. It will turn into it will turn into a a. It will turn into dumbass uh, privileged liberals saying. Delete your blackface tweet? No. Get fuck off, idiot. Here, two weeks. Get the fuck out of here. Stupid. Look at me. I want attention when we're talking about something entirely different. Suck my dick. Anyway. His name is Hassan. What was I saying? Um. What I was trying to say is. No, this will turn into a culture war thing where like, look, Republicans are getting fucking harmed by the cops too, but you don't see us complaining because they were protecting and serving. Liberals will say, um, you know, it's good that that happened to Brad Parscale. And then Republicans will say, so wow, look at these fucking liberals who cry about like black criminals getting harmed by the police, but never share that same kind of sympathy when white, good old, wholesome, 
conservative, uh, you know, Trump supporters get harmed by the police. You, you see what I'm saying? It's going to turn into like a fucking silly uh, back and forth between uh, silly back and forth culture war between liberals and Republicans. I love the system. I can now remove the tinfoil hat. Hey, Arjan, keep it up. You have changed many of my friends' minds and my ex-racist working class mom. Keep spreading class consciousness doing God's work. Yes, I know that Chris Wallace said he's not supposed to be fact-checking. And he's supposed to be invisible, I know. Pascal is my cousin. I am trans and moved far away from my pro-Trump family. When you don't give a damn about the humanity, you can start to concentrate on the color of the blood, damn, then the color of skin. What? I love the system. I can now remove the tinfoil hat. Um, they use those talking points on a 13-year-old autistic child was shot by police a few days ago. Yeah. digging Twitter followers for the past five months. Literally all because of you. I am forever grateful for what you do every day, and I know I'm not alone. Love you, dude. Thank you. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm out of control. I apologize for that. My dog was diagnosed with lymphoma today. Your From H. Bizzle, we have pics of her if you scroll down. To. Thanks for all you do, Hassel. Oh, you're such a big man, Hassan. Candace started fled screaming. What, like bloody pics? In a bikini before telling a passerby, I think my husband just killed himself. Yeah. I don't really see any like bruises or anything, but anyway, what is happening with these donors? I'm not listening. Um, my dog is diagnosed with lymphoma. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Brad Parscale is my cousin. I'm trans and moved far away from my pro-Trump family so I could transition to a safer environment. Thank you for what you do. Holy shit, really? That's crazy. Anyway, yeah, it, it's not good. It's fucking not good what they did to Brad Parscale, even though fuck Brad Parscale and he's a piece of shit. It's still not good what they did to him, okay? Um, cops really need to fucking... Stop operating like uh, every single person that they are involved with is a goddamn enemy combatant. His name is That's Hassan. my take on the Brad Parscale uh, conversation. Hassle, love you, chat. Hassle, have a good Monday, Hassle.